I really enjoy using this 10 car fishing pole as my portable mast. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the good things about it and why I use it. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you one of the accessories that I use when I'm out portable operating. This is the 10 car fishing pole. The mast is called the Blue Sardine 80. It's 21 and a half feet long, which is about six and a half meters. This thing weighs in at about 13 and a half ounces, which I think is 0.38 of a kilogram, something like that. The diameter of this thing is about an inch wide, and that's about, what, 25 millimeters? I could be wrong. Correct me if you want down below. That'd be great. This is a Tenkara Japanese fishing rod, and it's used for wading out into the water. It doesn't have a reel to it. You put some uh, fishing line on the end of that thing and you cast it out into whatever body of water you're going to catch fish in. And as a ham operator, we're always looking for new ways to improve the hobby and make it better, lighter, and more efficient. And this is one of them. The rod itself comes with 11 sections. This is a telescopic friction twist locking extension. It's real simple to use, which is one of the reasons I like it. I've been out operating summits on the air or soda in cold temperatures, not less than 32 degrees because I want to have fun. So I'll take it out there and this thing actually handles it really, really well. So far it hasn't broke on me, but I have made a couple of improvements to this rod. One of the changes I've had to make to the rod is this end cap that comes off would fall off and get lost if I didn't tie a string onto it. I put a few wraps of string around the end of the cap and put some orange tape on it so I wouldn't lose it. Same goes for the other end, wrap some string around it and put some orange tape on there so I have this secured. And this is really important because the first rod that I had, I didn't know any better, and that cap came off and it was gone. I just used some basic string. This is the same kind of string I use for guying my soda antennas to the trees. This is, I think, 35 pound test. It's not gonna fall off and it hasn't broken in a couple years for me. This rod is serviceable by taking off the end cap if I didn't tape up this end down here, I run the risk of the end screwing off and then all the rod sections can come out. Now here's what I do to get the antenna hooked onto the end of this mast and get it raised up. It needs to be something quick. I don't want a bunch of stuff that's fiddly. Fiddly is not good when you're out doing soda or you're in a cold environment when your fingers don't work so well. What's important about this is I take one of the sections and I run a piece of uh, paracord through here. There's a top section of this rod and it comes with one of those fishing eyelets and that's where you'd run your fishing line through there when you're going to use it for fishing. I'm not and it's fairly weak. That one's got a lot of flexibility in it. It would not be good for holding up a wire antenna center insulator and some coax. Another tip if you haven't thought of this already, don't use camouflage tape. You want to use something reflective, something fluorescent that you can find when you're out in the field. When you're out setting up portable, think of being at a park and you're in the grass, um, if you get a piece of anything, any kind of accessory that you're using in this camouflage uh, and you were not sure where it went and you drop something, ask me how I know, then you're gonna lose it. This brass cap screws into the end of this carbon fiber rod and it's not like you can tighten this down and make it a super secure connection. So that's why I tape it to make sure it's not going anywhere. Once you've taken off the back cap, you have access to all the sections. Everything comes out of here. And now you've got access to every single tube that's part of this mast. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna take out the center and I'm gonna show you what I did to fix this. You can see I've got my little string dangling out the top of this. I needed a way to secure my center insulator, which will have my antenna wires coming out each side of the banana clip here, and my coax hooked onto the bottom. I needed a way to hook that on quickly, securely, and also be lightweight. And again, I didn't want a bunch of fiddly stuff to go along with my outing. So what I came up with was taking this rod, which is the, uh, the center part, the smallest section that's strong enough to hold it, and I ran some paracord through the length of this thing. Pick whatever size you're gonna need for the rod that you'll have. Anyway, I ran a length of this thing down the end and tied a knot here. I put a knot on the end of this. That's the part that goes inside the rod and comes out to the other side. You're also gonna to need to put a, a knot on the other end. This is the end we'll call the business end, the part that has the, the string on it here. You're gonna to need to put a knot on both sides, otherwise this string's gonna collapse 
inside the rod, then you won't be able to get to it when you need it. In the comments below, ask me how I know. Because this section is smaller than the rest of them, you wanna make sure that your string is long enough so that when it's collapsed and inside the rest of the tubes nested inside there, that it doesn't disappear inside the, uh, the whole assembly. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to flip this thing over and shake it out of there. And it could actually get stuck. So it needs to be long enough to get access to when you need it. This way, you only need to stick your finger in to grab a hold of it and pull the sections out. This makes setup an incredibly easy thing to do. I'm a pretty big fan of paracord. It's got a lot of uses. You can tie a knot in it and take it back out and reuse it for something else. On the center insulator, I'm also using paracord, and that's the part that I'm gonna to use to tie this together. Taking the rod when I'm out in the field, and it's, I've only got it maybe like four feet off the ground, I just shove the insula center insulator through it. It's just that easy. Tie a simple knot, and that's going nowhere. The beauty of this setup for me is that when I'm done doing a soda activation or I'm done activating at a park or something like that, all you have to do is give this a quick tug and you're done. It's just that easy. So that's the reason I use that. It's a super simple thing to do and it makes deploying your antenna mast that much easier. All right, so now you've seen the rod, how I deploy it, and a couple of things I've done to modify it to make it easier for when I put up a ham radio antenna. There's one more thing I've done to this mast to make it uh, be more durable. The only thing you have to stand up your mast when you're on top of a peak is maybe some rocks, making a rock pile. Well, when you do that, it's gonna be awfully hard on this carbon fiber. I put on a protective coating and all this really is is giant shrink wrap. It's like for doing large cables, large electrical cables. Once I get these shrink wrap sleeves put on the rod, this gives me that added protection from rocks and other things when I'm out in the field. Now here's how I get this mast to stay up on the ground. The next accessory that I take on just about every outing that I can because I don't know what I'm gonna have available to me to put this thing up in the air are these orange ground stakes. These things are freaking awesome. You can see that I've ground down this part of the anchor, chewed away all of this, and made it so that the rod itself fits in here really nicely. So there you go, that's how I get this thing ready for pounding into the ground. I'm using an orange flex tie. This is one of these little aluminum inside tie wraps with a plastic coating. And I'll use that to tie around my rod. There you go. You pound that into the ground and you're golden. I've used this setup in all kinds of conditions. If you've got a bush or a tree, that little orange tie wrap will secure it to a branch that's in the tree and the tree becomes the way to hold this mast up on your site. Of course, if you're at the park or something where you've got soft ground, you can just push on this with your foot and it'll shove it into the ground, making setup even that much easier. Sometimes you just wanna get out there and start operating that radio and having fun. This is a really great way to get something like this set up. And of course, I'll put a link in the description below for the different parts that I use in case you're gonna to try to set something like this up for you. Well, if you're interested in seeing some of the other options I've used before, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to make a video about that, showing the different sizes and comparisons and uh, strengths that some of these things have. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button down below. It helps the video and it helps the channel. And of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.